Hello everybody, I am Jedi Jack Penguin and welcome to my comparison of Hogwarts Castle. Over the last 20 years, LEGO has made many versions of this iconic location. Right in front of us, we have four different versions of the castle. Those being set number 4709 Hogwarts Castle from 2001, 4842 Hogwarts Castle from 2010, set 75954 Hogwarts Great Hall, and the most recent 76389 Hogwarts Chamber of Secrets. Not included in this lineup is set number 4730 The Chamber of Secrets from 2002, but once I do eventually get that I will for sure be doing a separate video comparing that to the 2021 version. Some quick stats on these four sets before we get started. We have set number 4709 Hogwarts Castle. This set includes 682 pieces and minifigures of Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, Hermione Granger, Draco Malfoy, Albus Dumbledore, Professor Severus Snape, Rubius Hagrid, Peeves, and a Gryffindor Knight statue. This set retailed for $89.99 back in October of 2001, and in today's money, if bought new, this set would cost around $135, which is about the same as the current Hogwarts Chamber of Secrets set. Next, we have set 4842 Hogwarts Castle. This set includes 1,290 pieces and minifigures of Harry Potter, Hermione Granger, Albus Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall, Professor Snape, Professor Flitwick, Mr. Filch, Lord Voldemort, and two Dementors. This set retailed for $129.99 back in September of 2010, and in today's money, if bought new, would cost about $160. Moving on to the more recent sets, we have set 75954 Hogwarts Grey. Great Hall. This set includes 878 pieces, minifigures of Harry Potter, Ron Weasley, Hermione Granger, Draco Malfoy, Susan Bones, Albus Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall, Professor Quirrell, Rubius Hagrid, and Nearly Headless Nick. This set retails for $100 when it released in July of 2018, and the set is still currently available at some retail locations. And finally, we have set 76389 Hogwarts Chamber of Secrets. This set includes 1,176 pieces and minifigures of Harry Potter, Ginny Weasley, Luna Lovegood, Colin Creevy, Justin Finch Fletchley, Albus Dumbledore, Nearly Headless Nick, Gildory Lockhart, Professor Sinistra, Tom Riddle, and Golden Voldemort. This set currently retails for $130 and just came out back on June 1st of 2021. Now with all of that information out of the way, time to start looking at our builds. One long-term debate that got sparked up again this year regards the color of the roofs. We have sand green versus dark gray. Now back in 2001, we saw the introduction of the sand green roofs. We also had a little bit of a mix between having the dark gray roofs that we saw return again come 2018 with that castle lineup. But just recently in 2021, we saw the castle switch from that dark gray that was actually accurate to the source material back to the sand green, which I'm totally fine with that. It's nostalgic. I really love it in the 2010 Hogwarts because that's really the Harry Potter lineup that I grew up with. And I think it's just become that one staple color along with the tan and the dark gray mixing together that we've seen throughout all of the other Harry Potter sets from the past and I just think it works. It, it's fine. Even though it's not accurate, I like it. It's perfect. Now, do I think the sand green works for the 2021 sets? I mean, yes and no. There are some things that I would switch out, like some of those cheese slopes I would definitely fiddle around with. Though, personally, I think the dark gray looked a lot better than the sand green, but the sand green is nostalgic and that's really where it gets me when it comes to a castle layout like this, and especially on like the fluffy encounter set that we saw this year, I think that the sand green looked really, really good on that set. But then again, when you attach all of those 2021 sets together, you get one giant block. I gotta work on doing a separate video where I discuss changing the layout for that, so look forward to that sometime in the future. But I think that the Hogwarts layouts when it comes to the roofs in the past turned out a lot better compared to what we got recently in 2021. Another big discussion topic when it comes to the facade of Hogwarts is the rocky ground. Does it have it or does it not? 
Most recently in 2021, we saw the return of the Rocky Ground that we somewhat saw back in 2001-2002 with the introduction of the Chamber of Secrets in 2002 and also just a little bit on the back of the Great Hall with those big Rocky pieces that they actually included in sets back in the day, believe it or not. Now, the 2010 and 2018 versions of the castle didn't get this treatment, though it would have been cool to see them try that. I know people have probably mocked around trying to get those to have their own rocky bottoms. The only other castle to have a rocky bottom is the 2018 direct-to-consumer Hogwarts castle, which I think actually looks really nice with that, especially just because it's a micro-scale build. The only flaw to the rocky background that we see in the 2021 sets is the fact that, again, it's the blocky problem where it just looks like a giant block when you connect everything together. Another topic of discussion when it comes to the front of Hogwarts is, is it tall or is it short? We have a few different things going on when it comes to sizing these sets where the interiors get smaller over time or they get medium to big. It's just, I don't know what happens when it comes to thinking that out, but it's likely the next topic I have to talk about. We'll discuss this even further. So starting off with what I think is the tallest expansion, especially if you combine it with other sets that released alongside it, is the 2001 lineup. Now, originally back in 2001, it showed you placing the potions classroom right underneath the Great Hall. That eventually changed to being the Chamber of Secrets right under the Great Hall, which is kind of similar to what we got in 2021. When I was first experiencing the build for the 2001 Hogwarts Castle, I just was blown away by how tall it was compared to probably any other Hogwarts Castle that I've ever built, especially the Great Hall, which is our next topic because each of these sets have it was a lot taller than I really expected it to be. And that's not even talking about the rocky portion of the set, which even is part of the foundation, which doesn't really even make too much sense. It's kind of like the Great Hall's underground a little bit. It's kind of weird the way that they did it, but hey, it's their first try of the Great Hall, and since they have improved upon the design of it. The second tallest model I have over here is the 2021 Chamber of Secrets set, and again, that's just because it has the Chamber of Secrets, that rocky part underneath the castle. And just like the 2001 version of Hogwarts, you can use other expansions that released alongside it to make it taller and bigger as you see fit. Maybe we'll see more expansions next year in 2022. We'll have to wait and see. Now the next biggest has to be the 2018 Great Hall set. And that's my next topic. As I just said, the Great Hall, it's crazy to see what they did with the Great Hall there. I think it's the best version of the Great Hall that we've gotten that's like minifigure scale. Probably next place goes to the 2010 just for nostalgic reasons. And then there's sort of like a mid place in between when it comes to the 2021 and 2001 versions of the Great Hall. Because the 2021 version sees the removal of the tables and somewhat of the removal of the house unity that we saw within the 2018 version of the Great Hall. And yes, even though it does have that nostalgic factor of the roofs that we also see in the 2010 version of the Great Hall, it, it just shrunk, it got smaller, a lot smaller than, than anyone probably would have expected it to get compared to the 2018 version, which I think is, again, they're probably their best minifigure scale Great Hall unless they eventually do a direct-to-consumer for, for that location, which I would definitely appreciate LEGO to do in the future if they're listening. And then in last place for the Great Hall, we have the 2001 version, which again, there's some weird things going on when it comes to that set. A lot of open gaps, not as many windows as we see when it comes to the other three that we have represented on this table. And that set has one of the weakest interiors for a great hall that we've ever seen. And then finally, the shortest set that we have on this table is the 2010 Hogwarts Castle, which is more so long than it is short just because they wanted to give you a bunch of different sections of Hogwarts, which you don't really see too much of when it comes to these other sets. Specifically, the 2018 set is mainly the great hall, and then you get like two or three other tower rooms going on over there, but the 2010 version gives you a little peek at the Astronomy Tower, the Owlry, which is supposed to be a separate tower connected near Hogwarts, and Dumbledore's office, which doesn't really look that much like it should from the outside, but hey, LEGO did their best here, and I think they did a very nice job. 
Moving into the interiors, we have a few things in common, but mostly a mixed bag of references in each of these sets. So picking up where we left off with the Hogwarts Great Hall, as I said before, I really prefer the 2018 Great Hall over all of the other ones that you see on this table. Not only does it have the house unity with the tables, all four tables represented in Lego form right there, but we get the flags with separate Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, Hufflepuff, and Slytherin markings, which I absolutely love. Just like the 2001 and 2021 versions, we also get the chimney placed right there front and center in the middle of the Great Hall, which is not something I generally like when it comes to this particular layout but hey, it's fine for what it is. Also, when it comes to this set, we don't get as much food on the tables as you get for, say, like the 2010 Great Hall has a really nice abundance of food that we don't really see within any of the other Great Halls that we've gotten, which I really love. You get a cake in there, you get a chicken, a full-fledged chicken, and you get a plate with some berries as well as a croissant. We also see that croissant float over to the 2021 version of the Great Hall, which also adds two new foods that we've never really seen before, two new cereals. We have the Cheery Owls and the Pixie Puffs, which are both represented by stickers. Really cool to see that. We also see a number of chocolate frogs in the interior of the Great Hall and also all around the 2021 set, just I guess as loose chocolate frogs from the cards that you collected in the set. And then finally, in the 2001 Great Hall, we have a few goblets, we have a letter, and we have scabbers on the floor. We don't have, like, any food at all, because I don't think LEGO really had food to offer that would fit in the Great Hall at that time. Another similarity between these is that they all feature some flags with somewhat of a house unity thing going on, where we get all four houses represented in the 2018 flags. We get only Gryffindor and Slytherin represented in 2010. 2021 has one flag that features all of the houses, which is something that we really haven't seen in Harry Potter since I guess like 2002 with the Dueling Club, because they had the House Unity flags in that set. And then finally 2001 has a reversible flag which has Gryffindor on one side and Slytherin on the other. Another thing that we see in the 2018 Great Hall is the teacher's table, which I think this is probably the best way that it's ever been represented. Second place probably goes to 2010 just because you at least get some chairs, at least two chairs to sit Snape and I guess McGonagall can't sit because she has her skirt piece and I guess you could put Dumbledore there. I mean, Dumbledore should be in the middle, but hey, it's fine. Third place, and I can't believe I'm saying this has to go to the 2001 Hogwarts Castle because we at least get a table there and at least a chair for Dumbledore that's specifically made for Dumbledore. And then in last place, even though I love that they brought us Dumbledore's podium bringing that owl piece with the open wings for the very first time in that golden color, we don't get a table in the 2021 Great Hall. I don't know why they don't give us that. I mean, it's just because they're pressed for space in that set, which is again why we only get the two tables. Would have been nice if they gave us four tables in there, but hey, you know, they did what they could do. Would have liked to also see something completely different instead of another great haul because we just got it back in 2018 and that set is even still on the shelves. Another thing that three of these sets possess, but one of them does not, is a spiral staircase. Now first, in 2001, we saw this giant staircase that leads up to Gryffindor Tower, or at least the Gryffindor Common Room, not the dormitories, because I believe you get that in another set in 2001. We have the Fat Lady represented for the first time in Lego form. We only saw her two times other than this one. We saw her again in 2001, and then we saw her for a third time, but not really within the 2004 Clock Tower set. Now we use the older light gray for the stairs over here, and then we switch right over to the dark gray, the normal dark gray that we know and love in the 2010 castle. And then we switch to something even more completely different, which was, I guess, a new recolor for the time. We have this more nougaty color for the stairs in the Hogwarts Great Hall from 2018. Another thing we see represented throughout some of these sets are classrooms. We see a little bit of a potions area in the 2018 Great Hall. 
And I don't really know what that other room is supposed to be with the sorting hat. I guess it's just like a storage room, even though the sorting hat should be in Dumbledore's office. We get that also within 2019. So don't really know what's going on over there. We have another representation of the Mirror of Erised that we saw separated in some other various sets in 2011 as well as 2001. Moving to the 2021 version of the Great Hall, we see the first ever representation of Professor Lockhart's Defense Against the Dark Arts class. Not only do we get that, but we also get his office a floor above, which I really love all of the stickered references in that set. Really cool to see all of those different portraits. And right above that we see the Astronomy Tower, which we also see represented in 2001, but a little bit more weak. And then we see it represented in 2010. As for the 2018 lineup, we saw it represented in 2020. In the 2001 version of the Great Hall, we see the very first representation of the library at Hogwarts, or specifically the restricted section where we get a few very cool printed book pieces. We also see that represented in the 2010 version of the Hogwarts Castle where you have these handcuffs holding together this case with all of these books. No prints in there, which is a little disappointing, but hey, it's fine. It's what LEGO could do back in the day. Also in the 2010 version of Hogwarts Castle, we see both the Gryffindor and Slytherin dormitories represented. When it comes to the 2001 version of Hogwarts, we see the Gryffindor common room with the fat lady, as I mentioned previously. Really cool to see that represented for the first time. Other than those dormitory representations in 2010, we also saw dormitories for Gryffindor, Slytherin, and even Ravenclaw in the 2018 through 2020 lineup for Hogwarts Castle. And we saw a few other various sets in 2001 through 2002 representing both the Gryffindor and Slytherin common rooms. Another low-key thing we see represented in most of these Hogwarts sets is the Owlry. Even though that location is supposed to be somewhat separate compared to the castle where they get like their own like tower area just because you don't want all that owl poop around. Probably the best representation we have here has to be the 2010 version of Hogwarts where we also have those printed owl pieces which were new for 2010. Really cool to see that they started printing the owls back in the day. We also see a smaller version in the 2001 set. We see a small perch for Hedwig in the 2021 set and we get another smaller representation in one of the 2018 expansions. Now talking about some things that are specifically exclusive to certain castles, we have both the Room of Requirement and Dumbledore's Office and the Trophy Room represented in the 2010 version of Hogwarts Castle, which I think is really nice. You also get a suit of armor, which is hiding Tom Riddle's diary for some apparent reason, which we also get a much better version with a sticker in the 2021 version of Hogwarts. In the 2021 version of Hogwarts, we see the Chamber of Secrets represented for the first time since 2002. Really cool to see it return with the slide from Moaning Myrtle's bathroom, the entrance to the chamber, as well as the head of Salazar Slytherin, which I really love seeing represented again in Lego form. Some other things that we only really see in the 2001 version of Hogwarts, though, we see a little bit in the 2010 as well as the 2021 expansions are these more hidden features. Like for instance, this part of the wall that you can turn around to change the fireplace into this translucent treasure chest with these gems. We also get some hidden features in the Great Hall as well as the library. You get this lever that you can push up in the Gryffindor dormitory, which opens up another secret feature a floor up. And in the Great Hall, you get a spot to hide Peeves as well as some stuff up in the attic. Wrapping things up with the interior, one last thing I have to talk about with the 2001 version of Hogwarts is the fact that we get the boathouse represented, where we also get a boat. We see the boat also represented in the 2018 version of Hogwarts Castle, just because both of those sets are based off year one. Other than those two representations, we've only seen the boathouse represented one other time within the microscale 2018 Hogwarts Castle, which I think is also just probably one of the better versions represented there because I'm unsure if LEGO will ever be able to capture that location the way they did it in a micro scale version. To celebrate the 20th anniversary of LEGO Harry Potter through some of the summer 2021 sets, 
we are getting these collectible 2x2 two two tiles of chocolate frog cards with famous witches and wizards on them. Now out of these 16 cards to collect, I'm only missing 3 of them and I have 4 duplicates. I also did want to do a quick comparison when it comes to Dumbledore because we did get a Dumbledore card back in 2001 which was a sticker and I wanted to just show it right next to the two other Dumbledore cards that we got this year in 2021. I just think that the 2021 versions are a lot better, mainly because they are actually shaped like the Chocolate Frog cards. But overall, I really like how this display looks, and I'm really happy to have almost all of the Chocolate Frog cards. Still have two more sets to buy with four cards to collect. Hopefully I don't get any duplicates there, because if so, then maybe I'll have a full set. To finish us off, let's take a look at the minifigures included throughout these four sets and compare them to other versions that we've seen. Starting with our first minifigure comparison, we have Harry James Potter, the boy who lived. These are pretty much all of the year one slash year two variants that we've gotten through all of the 2018 through 2021 sets, including three characters that we have all the way in the back over there that we're going to get right to in one second. From 2001, we have two variants, one of those from the 2001 Hogwarts that we just looked at, and then the 2010 Hogwarts variant. Now, overall, I think that LEGO has done a pretty good job giving us versions of Harry over the years. As you can see, we have so many versions, especially from the more recent sets. It's hard to find a set that doesn't include a Harry Potter minifigure in this line. And we have lots of characters who are different, who include exclusive facial expressions, who include exclusive torso prints, torso prints that'll appear again in sets like the advent calendar in the future, which I'm not too happy about. And then we have our golden variant. And it's really cool to see like how the figures have changed over the years, like starting in 2018, leading to 2021, and how the robes have changed to be this more black color right here, which actually is more accurate to the source material compared to what we saw back in 2018, so I think that's really cool. And we have a lot of very cool casual variants of Harry. Most of these use the same exact facial expression, though we have a few with different ones, as I said before and then the invisibility cloak from the CMF Series 1. So yeah, that's really all that I have to say for this quick spin around of all these Harry Potter minifigures. It's really cool to see how far LEGO has come over the years. We've also gotten many versions of Harry's friend Ron Weasley over the years. Here's a quick look at a few of those. Starting off over here, we have one variant from 2001 in that Hogwarts uniform. Then we continue on to 2010. 2018 and then 2021 with that Hogwarts Moments version. And then we move right over to summer of 2021 where we have that switch from the dark gray to the black robes, which as I said before for Harry is a little bit more accurate. We have our golden variant of Ron who comes in Hogsmeade. And we have some other casual variants as we move over here, some year one slash two versions. Next, looking at Hermione Granger, we have another variant from back in 2001 and a variant from 2010, both from those Hogwarts castles. Then we move on to the 2018 variant and the 2021 versions right there where we switch to the black robes. And we have the one from the advent calendar, our golden 20th anniversary version and some casual versions and I also just thought I'd throw in the cat Hermione because that's a very cute new head mold that Lego introduced in that Polyjuice Potion Mistake set. Look forward to my comparison of that coming up very soon. But either way, not too much going on when it comes to Hermione right there. We get the same facial expression for most of these, though I think we get a new one. Well, no, we don't get any new ones other than, of course, we get the different facial expressions for the older variants and the golden exclusive version. Comparing some of the students you see throughout these sets, we're going to start off with Draco Malfoy. We have our variants from 2001 and 2010, and then we move on to 2018. We also have a 2020 variant right at the end from the Diagon Alley set, which I don't know if that's the same exact version that we're also going to be getting in the first flying lesson. We're going to have to wait and see on that. But in between that one, we also have our Hogwarts Moment 2021 variant. I think there isn't really too much that has changed between these characters, just a little bit of change between the torso prints 
and then the facial expression has stayed the same for that 2018 variant. And then the one thing I do have to mention is the fact that we have the yellow hair compared to the tan hair. I much prefer the tan hair for the Malfoys compared to the yellow color. I just don't think the yellow color works very well. Next we have Ginny Weasley. We have our two variants from 2010 and then we have our 2020 and 2021 versions. Now I will be comparing this to the 2002 Ginny sometime in the future because I did just spend $100 on a Chamber of Secrets from 2002 so look forward to that review and comparison sometime in the future. But needless to say I have to complain about the reused facial expression we have for those two younger versions of Ginny Weasley. Would have been nice if they made a new facial expression this wave but unfortunately that is not the case. But I do really like the 2010 versions of Ginny. I think they captured her a lot better there than they did very recently. And we also get the same hairpiece between all of the characters. Some different prints when it comes to the torso, reused torso print for that version of Ginny that we also saw for Hermione back in 2010-2011. Next we have some variants of Luna Lovegood who just recently appeared in her year one version in the Chamber of Secrets set which also reuses the same facial expression that we got for Ginny in that set, which I don't know why they did that. It's kind of weird in my opinion. Then we have our 2021 variant from year five. We move on to year six where we have some complications when it comes to the mid-sized legs and then the regular sized legs and just how that works. The mid-sized legs should be used for the year five variant and the regular sized legs should be used for the other variants. Lego did get it right back in 2010, though that didn't really count because mid legs didn't really exist. And then we have some of our other students that we see between these sets. Susan Bones comes in the 2018 Great Hall, and then in the 2021 Chamber of Secrets, we see Justin Finch Fletchley, as well as Colin Creevy for the very first time in Lego form. Two very cool characters to get. We reuse the same facial expression we see for Ginny and Luna for Susan Bones, which I'm not a fan of, but you know, it's fine because she isn't really too recognizable of a character. We get the Hufflepuff robes for the very first time there, and we see a transition when it comes to the Hufflepuff robes with that more black look when it comes to Justin Finch Fletchley, which I really love seeing for the very first time in Lego form, but then we still have that same problem of the reused facial expression, the common boy facial expression, in contrast to the common girl facial expression. But then all the way in the back, we have Colin Creevy with a new facial expression, recolor of the Han Solo hairpiece, and the same Gryffindor robes that we see for most of the other Gryffindor characters within the 2021 waves. For our next minifigure, we have Albus Dumbledore, the headmaster of Hogwarts School. We've gotten Dumbledore quite a lot of times over the course of 2001 through 2021. Starting off, we have our 2001 variant, which go, you know, that's so nostalgic, that look for Dumbledore. I really love that they tried to mimic that style in the 2021 Hogwarts Great Hall set. It's just really interesting to see how far they've come with the design of his character, and even the CMF Series 2 version of the Richard Harris Dumbledore I think is the best Dumbledore that we've ever gotten and I still think it's just crazy that we're coming out with all of these other versions with really nice leg prints or skirt prints and torso prints and also the change from the light gray to the white I think works very well for Richard Harris compared to the light gray that we saw back in 2018. We also see some differences when it comes to the facial expressions I think we did a jump from the 2018 to the CMF version, which is kind of similar to the one that we also see for these two that we just recently got this year. We also have our Michael Gambon Dumbledore, which we have our 2010 variant, and then our CMF Series 1 and the one from the Hogwarts Clock Tower for the old ball. Another thing I just have to point out is the fact that they keep making these really nice hair hat combos right here for Dumbledore. We saw it in the CMF Series 2 as well with that Richard Harris version. Looking at the back of Albus Dumbledore, we're going to have to remove those hair pieces to get a better idea. Here's a quick look at those facial expressions and the printing underneath the torso. No back printing for the 2001 variant. It's really cool to see how far they come with that facial expression from 2001 all the way to 2018. And then we change from the light gray to the white for the beards. And you can also see some kind of similar printing styles right there between these two variants, though slightly different right there when it comes to the patterns and coloring. You can also see somewhat of a similarity between these two right there. It's just really cool to see 
these prints all together in one group shot. And then we have our older Michael Gambon Dumbledores where I can remove the hair pieces. And between these versions, I definitely think that the CMF Series 1 variant facial expression is the best. This one is actually a reuse facial expression from the 2018 Year 1 Dumbledore, so that's one thing that I kind of question, but either way, it's fine. And then we have our new double-sided facial expression for the 2010 variant. You can see the glasses on the other side of that. We get back printing between these two and also back skirt printing for the Yule Ball variant. And then finally, we have no back printing on the CMF Series 1, which I'm quite surprised, to be completely honest, that they didn't put back printing there, but maybe it wasn't in the budget. For our next teacher, we have Professor Minerva McGonagall, who we've gotten quite a few times over the years. Unfortunately, I won't be comparing the 2001 variant because I don't have that one in my collection, at least fully complete. But right in front of us, best version, hands down, has to be the Hogwarts Moments version that we got this year in 2021 with that really cool hair hat combo that they have also been reusing on quite a few other characters. Then we move on to our 2018 and 2020 variant, difference between these two is that this one from 2018 has two facial expressions, a double-sided facial expression, and then the advent calendar variant only has that one facial expression. Should have actually turned that facial expression, but I'll be turning these figures around either way. We have our 2010 variant right there, which actually uses the slope piece for the skirt compared to the actual skirt piece that they introduced around the time of this theme coming back. And then most recently from 2021, we have our year three variant of McGonagall, which isn't completely accurate. Would have been nice to see her in some darker robes than that dark green, but I think they were trying to keep it consistent overall, which I'm totally fine with. And we get the same facial expression as the Hogwarts moment version, and then the hair piece, which is also the same color as you can see underneath the hat. And taking a look at the backs of Professor McGonagall, we have some very nice printing on the Hogwarts moment figure where we get the back skirt printing. We have some back printing on both of the 2018 and the 2020 and 2021 variants. No back printing when it comes to the 2010 version, as you can see there. And it's really cool just to see all of the differences between these characters. We get the same double-sided facial expression for the Hogwarts moment and the 2021 year three variants of Professor McGonagall. And we have the double-sided facial expression for the 2018 version and no double-sided facial expression for the 2019 version that came in the advent calendar. For our next teacher comparison, we have Professor Severus Snape. We have our variant with the glow-in-the-dark radioactive head from 2001. In 2010, we see our second ever version to actually use a flesh tone facial expression. And then in 2018, we saw another version of Snape. That led to 2021 where we get rid of the leg printing, change the torso print, those same facial expression. And then we have our 20th anniversary golden version, which has a new torso print and facial expression, kind of new facial expression for Professor Snape. Now, when it comes to my favorite version, I definitely think that the 2018 version is the best. Maybe if I put those legs on the 2021 version, maybe that one's a little bit better because I actually really like the torso print for that version. And the 2010 version is just very nostalgic to me, and especially that facial expression that eventually became a reused facial expression for Star Wars. And then 2001 is certainly something interesting. We have some leg printing right there, which is revolutionary for that time period, and a glow-in-the-dark facial expression, which I have no idea why LEGO did that back in the day. For our next teacher, we have Professor Flitwick. We have our most recent version, the Hogwarts Moments version. This is the actual year one slash year two version of Professor Flitwick, which I'm really happy that LEGO actually gave us. We have a recolor of the beard piece that we saw in The Hobbit, new facial expression and new torso print right there, still using the short legs throughout all of these versions. We have our 2010 version that comes in the Hogwarts castle. We have our CMF series one. And then we have the one from the Advent Calendar 2019. Now, when it comes to my favorite, obviously I'm going to pick the 2018 CMF version just because it's so accurate to the source material, in, even compared to this one, which, you know, I still like for nostalgic reasons, but still, I think that this is the best version that we've ever gotten of Professor Flitwick, and I'm excited to see what LEGO does with his character in the future. Next, we have Professor Rubius Hagrid, or at least 
Rubius, Hagrid, and Tilly becomes a professor. We have our 2001 variant, which is certainly something revolutionary right there. You can see that we have the printing on the front of the body, and you can remove the beard piece to take a better look at the facial expression. You can also do that with these. And you can see that we use the same exact facial expression between the 2018 and 2019 versions. And I think that the 2018-2019 versions have the better facial expressions. I don't really care for the ones that we see for the 2001 and the 2010 version. You know, even though it's nostalgic, kinda, you know, it just doesn't really fit Hagrid in my opinion. And you can also take a better look at all of the body prints and you can see how we went from this to the next one where we actually had light flesh hands going on for the 2010 version and also back in 2004, I believe. And then we stumbled upon a new redesign for Hagrid where we use the short legs that we see for all the kids. And we have some pin piece connections for the arms and the regular minifigure hands compared to these more modified versions that we saw in 2010. You can also see a huge jump when it comes to his umbrella, how it was brick built and then turned into the actual umbrella piece that they introduced in the Lego Batman movie, I believe. And lastly, for our teachers, we have Professor Sinistra, who we got for the very first time in the Hogwarts Chamber of Secrets this year, reusing the hair-hat combo that we saw for Professor McGonagall in the Hogwarts Moment Wave, and some pretty cool prints on the skirt piece and the torso right there, a little bit of gold on her arms, which I also really like seeing for her character, new double-sided facial expression. And then finally, we have Professor Gilderoy Lockhart. Now, as I said in my review, I would have really liked to see a cape piece included with this variant of Lockhart. I think that would have fit his character really well. We get the same facial expression between both of the characters, where you can see on the other side that we have this more scared, worried look where he's going down into the Chamber of Secrets. Really love that facial expression. Exclusive torso prints for both of the characters, though they are kind of similar, but in different colors. You know, like I said, would have been nice to see a cape with his character. The hair, I think, fits his minifigure very well. For our next comparison, we have Mr. Filch, who we saw for the very first time back in 2010, and then we saw him again in 2018. Since then, we haven't seen any other version. I think that the 2018 version is the best right there with that really nice hair piece for his character, also showing like the baldness from the top of his head, and you get a pretty cool double-sided facial expression. When it comes to the torsos between those two characters, they're very similar, though some different color swaps here and there, and some different printing, of course. And when it comes to both of the characters' legs, I really like that they both have prints. And then you can see a difference between the lantern builds that we see between 2010 and then 2018. We also saw Nearly Headless Nick appear for the very first time in 2018, and then we saw him again this year in 2021 where he has a more glow in the dark look, which I'll just throw on a picture of him glowing in the dark. Really cool to see that LEGO has actually captured how to do glow in the dark minifigures now, so I'm expecting more ghosts in the future LEGO, so please bring us the Fat Friar and other characters like that would be really cool to see. Now, when it comes to the styling between these two characters, we have very similar prints, though we, of course, get different colors where we have the more light gray, dark gray, and a little bit of white, but this one is mostly completely white, though we use the glow-in-the-dark color scheme right there for the overall character. Another thing I do want to point out that I really love about these two figures, though, is that we get these double-sided facial expressions, where from the very back you can see that we have different prints for both of them. A character from the books who we saw for the very first time in 2001 who didn't appear in the movies because he was cut is Peeves. Now, when it comes to his character, we get some very faded printing on his torso, and then we get the print from the front of the facial expression. Overall, he should be a lot more colorful than he is, so that's really my only complaint with his character. And then in 2001, we saw our very first version of the Gryffindor Knight statue, which we saw represented again in 2010. When it comes to both of these characters, if you remove the helmets, you can see we get a plain black head underneath the 2010 version, and you can see that we have a repeat of the Peeves facial expression for the 2001 version, which I think fits him very well, just because Peeves likes to hide in the suits of armor and make them talk and do silly things like that. Another big bonus when it comes to the 2001 variant is the fact that we get this printed Gryffindor shield piece, which I really like seeing in that set. Now moving to the last of our characters that we have to compare, we have Tom Riddle, who we saw appear last year in 2020 within a book, and then we see the most recent version from the 2021 Chamber of Secrets. 
Now one thing that I really love about both of these characters is the fact that we get two different facial expressions. You can see that we have a happy look on this one and a more furious look on the other one. And you can remove the hair pieces and turn them right around. Well now here you go, we only get the one facial expression for the 2020 version, though we get the double-sided facial expression for the 2021 variant. Now another thing I have to say about the facial expressions is the fact that the 2020 version did end up becoming a reused facial expression for Star Wars. I like the printing for both of the characters' torso pieces, though I would have liked to see some dual molding when it comes to the 2021 version, only because we have that light gray on the side and it doesn't really work with the printing that you see from the front. Moving on from there, we see Quirrell, who we saw again in 2018. First time appearance was back in 2001, which I don't have in my collection but we have Voldemort on the very back of his face. If you turn around his figure and remove his turban, you can see that we have Lord Voldemort's head on the very back of his, and I will be comparing it to the 2021 version, which is the golden version of Quirrell that we're gonna be getting in the first flying lessons once I eventually get that set. Now, over here we have most of our variants of Voldemort that we've gotten over the years. We have the 2010 version, and then we have the 2018 CMF Series 1, 2019, and then most recently in 2021, Goldemort, Vol Golden Lord Voldemort. Now when it comes to these characters, we get some pretty nice prints, very similar printing between the 2021 Golden version and then the CMF Series 1. That's one thing that I did want to point out, so it's kind of weird that they both have the same exact print. Voldemort has a nose all throughout all of these minifigures. The only time he didn't have a nose was back in the LEGO Dimensions version, which I probably should have actually thrown on here, but, you know, there's a good quick look at all of our versions of Voldemort, which leads to our last two characters that we have to look at, both of the Dementors. We have the 2010 version that we see in the 2010 Hogwarts Castle, and then we have the 2018-2019 version, which we haven't really seen too much of recently, so hopefully they bring that back, or even better, give us a new Dementor character to get. Would be pretty nice, or maybe even place it within a minifigure pack in the future for next year. Would be pretty cool to see that in some Death Eaters or some Quidditch Rogues, something different than what we got this year, which I still have to review. But the big difference between these two characters is that we have a more minifigure buildup for the 2018 version, and then we have this pogo stick style that we saw back in 2004, and the skeleton body for the 2010 version. You can also see the battle droid arms, and we get a regular minifigure head if you remove the cowls from the top or the hoods. You can see that we have the facial expressions with the mouth for the characters. I think that the black works a lot better than the dark gray does, but that's just my opinion, and I also think that the cape that we use for the 2010 and the older versions of the Dementors work a lot better than what we see in the 2018 version, where we have this more ripped up style cape. As a huge Harry Potter fan, I can't believe that I have all of these different versions of the castle right in front of me. When LEGO brought back the Harry Potter line in 2010, I got my first version of Hogwarts for Christmas that year. Little did I know that a few years later in 2018, we would get one of the best castle lineups ever. Not only did that lineup bring us the house unity, but most importantly, it brought back moments from the films for those who missed out on the original sets. Only weeks ago, I was fortunate enough to buy the first ever version of Hogwarts Castle from 2001, used for around $100 on eBay. It's crazy to see how far LEGO has come with their designs. I feel, if anything, the 2021 Castle does an amazing job paying homage to the original sets, both with the sand green roofs and the ability to customize the layout to your liking. And yes, as with any LEGO set, there are flaws in the system, but Hey, I feel like this was a good enough risk and I'm excited to see where it goes next year or if they decide to go back to the 2018 layout, which I wouldn't complain about to be completely honest. Otherwise, don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Tell me which of these layouts you prefer. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified about future videos. So yeah, that's it for now and I will see you next time. Bye!